Saturday morning, about 11 o'clock, January 14th. 18 degrees, sunny, and we're down here at Lake uh, Lemon. Oh no, excuse me, we're at Yellowwood uh, State Forest, not Lake Lemon. We're heading towards Lake Lemon. We're going to go north on the Tecumseh Trail all the way to Morgan Monroe. There's Marco right there. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we won't freeze to death. Uh, we won't, but uh, well, hopefully we'll get some really good uh, snow pictures. Morning. Hello. All right, there's Marco. We're starting out on our Tecumseh Trail Odyssey. And it's cold again, 18 degrees. So, I mean, we've been out in colder, but, uh, you know, it does take a little fun out of it. Like I said, for every, you know, degree that it gets down below 20 degrees, your fun decreases by about 20%. That's Randy's rule of, uh, of thermal depredation there. <laughs> Here's some something that's really neat is actually in Indiana. Look at that, cypress knees. Swear to gosh, you probably won't see them anyplace else. No, they're not big cypress knees, but they are cypress knees. We're just now uh, making the first climb out of Yellowwood uh, Lake. Uh, you can see this dusting of snow. It's still pretty cold, of course. Uh, winter packs are always heavier. I'm carrying about 35 pounds. Marco's got a couple pounds lighter than that. Sounds like I'm really fagging out. There's not as much moisture in the winter air so it's a little harder to breathe but not bad so Marco's up ahead of me and he thought I was talking to him which I am all right so uh, we'll see what we can see it's gonna be an interesting trip okay well one of the new routes to be a stuff trail a uh, reroute I should say something that the Hoosier Hiking Council has put in within like the last couple of years. Uh, we used to go down a logging road for quite a ways. Now we're just heading right through the hardwoods. Uh, you can see a lot of pines in this trail. It's one of my favorite things. A lot of red pines, a lot of white pines, a few uh, yellow pines. So there are, you know, on all the standard hardwoods that we find in Indiana, oaks, maples, hickories, ash, beech, wild cherry, walnut, etc, etc. Uh, I guess the weather's nice. Uh, you know, it is cold, but the wind has completely dropped off. So we're, we're doing good with that. You can see it's very pretty, very peaceful. Here's another pretty interesting thing right here, this big ditch ah, on the Tecumseh Trail. That is actually an old stagecoach road. Clothing. So, something that's different about winter camping Obviously, right off the bat is the clothing. Maybe if uh, you've watched some of my other videos, you notice that I'm dressed up a little bit differently. This jacket is what I call my woolly bear. It's a uh, Berber fleece, and I, I use it for deer hunting, but it works real good for backpacking. It's got a little bit of extra uh, insulation in there. It's a little heavier than my standard fleece. That's a nice jacket. You can see it's all kind of nice and gnarly looking. Uh, also, I Got a bacalavia that I use around my head and of course gloves. And uh, beneath all of this, I've got on a, a base layer of polypropylene. And so far, I don't feel cold at all, which, you know, that's the idea. If we stop moving, that's another thing. Inside my pack, 
I have a down jacket uh, with 650 weight goose down in it. I got that from Cabela's. And I've got a nice big old pair of socks. Uh, they're merino wool. By the way, my socks are wool too. So I got a lot of different stuff on. Uh, but that's what you kind of need out here. Notice I've also got sunglasses on. I, it's, it gets bright when the sun gets out here. Also, I use sunscreen. Here, so we'll come up here and we'll take a look. Now, Marco has a little bit different outfit. Uh, he's not going to wait up. But what he's got is mostly synthetic. He's a synthetic guy. There's no doubt. That's a city boy for you. You know. Now, his pants are... Are your pants fleece? Yep. Oh, his pants are fleece. Sorry. So here's the forest management sign. You can't really see it real good, but there's somebody scrapped. Or scribbled something about uh, all those different orchids that were in this woods, wild orchids, and now they're like most of them are extinct. And if we keep logging here, there won't be any orchids. That's probably true. So we're going down into one of the bigger hollows on this comes the trail. Uh, let me see. Me and Marco have camped down here a couple times. There's usually a little, there's a little creek down here. Usually some water. Uh, the hike. Back up the other side of the descent's not major. You know, we're talking probably less than 100 feet elevation changes here. Uh, the trail's really well switched back. Uh, so we, you know, we're not going to have any trouble getting down there. I'm being careful, though, you know. Uh, once we get up to the other side, we're probably about a mile and a half out of Pranch Pond, which is where I hope to eat lunch. I'm getting kind of hungry. You know, we stopped at McDonald's this morning and had some McDonald's food. Which is better than nothing. It doesn't never really sticks with me that long. So, I'll give you a little idea of what we're looking at here. Here we go. I can see. I don't know. This thing does not show depth well, but there's the hollow we're going down into. Come up to the top here. And they did a good job to back in this one. You can really appreciate them when you go up. For sure. One more quick shot. There you go. In the end of the winter time, huh? All right, great. Marco said he just saw a deer. So here's Pranch Pond. And they've got some really nice tall white pines over there, white pines on the other side. Uh, there's, you know, you can fish here, and there's some surprisingly sizable bluegill in this. So, no video of the Scumps Trail would be complete without some footage of the road walking that you have to do. Because there is about three sections of roads. You're never on them for more than a mile. Heck, we're not even going to be on this one for a half mile. But, there it is. Still are very rusty. We've gone to back Lake. Uh, the wind kicked up and it's starting to snow. Lavia, Buck Lavia. Sounds like a dessert. <laughs> Private property. Something else that you got on the Tecumseh Trail is that every now and then we've got easements 
Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, there's dogs, you can hear them barking. We just have to be careful. We're only going to be on it for about a quarter of a mile, maybe three-eighths. You know, but that is something you've got to deal with. You can't camp on it. You can walk on it. Okay, Marco says it's out. Road. More road walking. Not a whole lot. Mostly gravel this time. Another dedication marker. Dedicated to people who, like, went ahead and donated some the land here. Four thirty. Uh, coming up on Bean Blossom Street. There's a, like a drive forward here that sometimes you can't go over. Sometimes you can. Looks like we're gonna. We got lucky. We can go. We're gonna walk over it. It's also a trestle. If you can't go across the ford, you can still go around and go across the train trestle. Uh, this is actually one of the few creeks in Indiana that is actually has cannibal gold in it. That's right. There's gold in this, in this creek. Now, how much? I don't know. But I've heard several people talk about it, and you know, it's actually, you can, several places in Morgan than Low Fork. So here you go. That is uh, looking towards the railroad trestle. You can see that. Uh, if you're swinging around this way, looking downstream right there. Yeah. It's almost the river, you know, it's, and this is a constant water supply. It never dries up. Well, uh, we finally made it to the pines. Uh, we didn't think we're going to. Marco says we're at 11 something miles. Uh, you can take a look and see where we're going to camp. These are all red pines. Lots of down timber. Real quiet, real peaceful. Still lightly snowing. And we're going to have like, a big fire here within about oh, less than 45 minutes. So here's our fire, there's Marco. Uh, we're in a little red pine grove and it's like 24.5 degrees and we're nice and warm and toasty. We've just got through eating some pork loin and uh, Marco had chicken and potatoes and dressing and gravy. He said it wasn't that great. I am still just eating pork loin and recover right powder. I got stroganoff, beef stroganoff and loaded mashed potatoes for later. Having a little, you know, just a little libation. For, uh, do you want to say, ooh, there we go? <laughs> you know, a little bit of uh, a bit of social lubricant. Not that we need any social lubricant out here, but you know, it still makes you feel better. Makes the fire just that much more. All right, so uh, you know, we think the snow stopped. Uh, the barometer's rising, uh, so maybe we're done with it. There's 
my good morning, Blaze. Well, let's go and see if Marco's up. This is always a blast. Here we go. So you up, dude? You didn't freeze? Nothing. Hey Marco, it's like 8.30, almost 9 o'clock. Nothing. Yeah, he's asleep. Hopefully he's not frozen. Maybe he's asleep good too. <laughs> Alright. Well, what's we'll the idea? Hey, breakfast in a frozen woods, huh? Alright, well there's a couple tricks to that. I've got a little canister stove. I'm going to take that apart here and show you. Uh, that canister's going to have to be warmed up there. It's not going to work. The other trick is to do this. See that? That's water I put in there last night. You figure it's going to freeze. Anyway, so you put it in what you plan on heating it up in. I can stick that plate of fire. <laughs> I don't want to get the pot all dirty just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, stove to do that. And this is what I got. For breakfast, I'm having uh, Spam grits, uh, a raspberry tea type tea thing, and two uh, sweet and salty almond bars. And hopefully that'll be good. I'm sure it is. I got a whole quart of water, too, in the tent, so I'll be bringing out here. I'm trying to thaw out my boots. We'll see how that works. They are frozen solid. See, there's snow inside there. That is always a blast to put that on. I'm not going to put that on yet. Marco's still over there in the tent. Hey Marco! Yup, buddy, it's like almost 9.15. Okay. I got a nice fire going. Okay. He's up. Well, it's about 11.30, so it's been in the trail about a half hour. It's uh, really clear. There's not a cloud in the sky. Take a look, see? Yeah, it's uh, still pretty cold. It's about 25 degrees. We're making good time, though. Marco's not using his, uh, his micro spikes this time. It's just in the dusting snow in the ground. Uh, but yeah, this is the Indiana hardwoods in winter. So they neat looking my favorite places to be. Because there are a lot of pines on these comes to trail too, so that's another good thing. Last uh, bit of road walking we've got to Morgan Monroe, I mean less than maybe like 200 yards back. Uh, I don't know what road Off the road now, back in the woods. Lots of baby uh, beaches in here. Uh, we're gonna water up at this uh, creek. Down here, I'll show you. There's a fox tent shelter. We're coming right up on it. It's right up here. We almost went past it. It's time for lunch. That's cool though. Well, I was gonna see if Marco would go past it, and he would have. He's just too dedicated. Now this is another shelter. This is the only shelter on the Tecumseh Trail. And it was built by the Hoosier Hiking Council in conjunction with the uh, Lutherans, who I believe this is all their property. So they gave us an easement to walk here, and camp here, and things like that. There is a water source here down the hill an old homestead cistern, but we got plenty of water. So we're coming up on it here. I've stayed here. I'm not a big fan of shelters. Other people really think they're the greatest thing in the world. They're not bad. It's just sometimes they can be kind of mousy, which means they got a lot of mice living out. 
this one actually faces the west, which is kind of strange. Uh, usually if I stay here as anybody, I camp on the ground. Yeah, Marco's pretending there's a girl here. And of course there's not. There you go. It's an Appalachian style uh, shelter. That kind of reason you see it better. Fox Den shelter. It's got a fire ring and a picnic table. But no uh, no toilets and that's what I think Marco was hoping for. Oh well. Hmm, so what did this? All these scratch marks in the leaves here. Let's take a look. Look at that, that'll tell you a turkey. So here's something kind of disturbing. You look through here, you see this blue line? We probably passed about, I don't know, 40 to 50 trees in the last uh, half mile or so with these blue lines on them. I'm guessing, of course, that uh, this is what they're going to try and cut these down. Well, you know, all about the forest management. Well, you know, this forest management is just fine without anybody fooling with it at all. Well, it's uh, 2.26, and it's pretty warm, as long as you keep moving it is. We're actually coming up on one of the uh, one of the stranger things that you'll find on the Tecumseh Trail, and that is a, uh, well, the existence of a brand new steel bridge over this creek. Now, I'd love to tell you I knew what the name of this creek was, but I don't. Uh, used to be we just crossed it by foot. Uh, last year, well, two years ago, it just sort of, I crossed it by foot. And last year, San Marco came upon it, and we found it. This is a very expensive one. I mean, I don't know how much. I understand the property manager here from Morgan Monroe had a lot to do with it. Uh, I don't know who even, how they even got it out here. To tell you the truth, the amazing thing was that they did get it out here. So let me swing this around. Okay. And we'll come up on this so you can see where it's at. I'm sure there's other people who could tell me the name of this creek, but I couldn't be one of them. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it seems kind of silly to put this much money out here in the middle of no place on this property, but then again, who am I? Just somebody who walks on it, and I guess I should be happy I've even got it. So there it is. I guess they came in this way, it looks like, I would say. I'll bet this bridge was built in Wisconsin. No, yes it was. It was built in Wisconsin. Here's Bear Lake. Let's see if I can't cross this and not get my feet wet. Get some little stepping stones. This is like the overflow. There we go, no problem. Marco's beat us to try. I took the long way. Like I said, it is a very picturesque lake. The banks are very steep on the west side there. But not too many people know it's even here. <laughs> and I'm not even sure how long it's been here. 100 years. 100 years. Marco says 100 years. All right, cool.
stone? We don't know. Really? I don't care either. So we're coming in to the cedars here. Got kind of cold on us. Boy, I'm tired. I don't know how long we've uh, been hiking. Here's one more hill, huh? Seems like it's been forever. When we started off at 11, it's only 5, so we've been hiking for 6 hours. I took about a half hour break for lunch. Yeah, the end of the day is hard on you. Those are not cedars. Those are pines. What do you know? I... This is Marco sterilizing his water with his dairy can. Uh, you gotta admit, that is pretty special looking stuff right there, huh? What it does is that's an ultraviolet light, and it basically, in, in very simplified terms, it gives all the bacteria, germs, anything in there a really, really bad sunburn and they die. So, it takes like, how long, Marco? Uh, one and a half minutes. Another thing we do when we're out winter camping is dry out our shoes. So here I got my insoles and my hiking boots up against the fire. You gotta be real careful, you don't want to melt them. So you know, it's something that you're checking on often. Uh, I've just got my boots over here and I've already done my stuff. Sunday night, like almost 10 o'clock. You hear Marco still playing? <laughs> yeah, he's doing good. I <laughs> know we're not taping. So it's like, it's warmed up quite a bit. So I'm gonna go to bed and I'll see you in the morning. So just hanging right in there for my fire. Yeah, neato. We just started out. Uh, it's 9.30, out of camp, warmer this morning, and we're heading up through Morgan Monroe, and actually here comes some of the first people we've seen in the trail. They're trail running or what? I think they're trail running, yeah. Looks like it anyway. They're like ahead of us a ways. Yeah, they're trail runners. They're just bouncing along, <laughs> literally. Uh, so... Here they come. Trail running, all right. And there's the trail runner girl. Hey, how's it going? All right. Just finished the, uh, one of the biggest climbs on the whole trail from here to Yellowwood. Coming out of the, one of the gaps. We're getting ready to go down at Low Gap. And there's a big climb out of that after that. But once we get on top of that, we're only like four miles out. Coming up on the uh, bridge that uh, spans Low Gap Creek, or a lot of a better term, I don't really know the name. Uh, who's right to counsel? has built this one a couple times and has washed out. I think this is one of their latest efforts. Uh, it looks pretty nice, it's kind of elevated. It's got some good stuff going on here, so let's check it out. There it is. Looks brand freaking new, doesn't it? Yep, it is. It's up high so that it doesn't get washed out. This whole place down in here 
this whole area here is a floodplain and we'll wash out given a chance. Has several times. Yeah, there you go. You know what this creek is? Is this Low Gap Creek or what? You know what I mean? Well, this is the Low Gap Trailhead parking lot though. Come the trail is this. That's right, it's the Goofus Homestead. Uh, this was one little shack for a while, then it burnt down. And you can see that they've been making major progress on uh, building them a, a not to code, whatever the heck it is. Icicles. We're gonna get some good icicle pictures here. We're coming down into the part of Morgan Monroe, which we're still on the Tecumseh Trail, but it's also the Low Jack Trail. So we're coming down into where the stone shelters are, or rock houses, or whatever you want to call them. Also, it looks like there's going to be some good icicle pictures, so uh, I think we're going to take lunch down here, or maybe it's the creek. Uh, I don't know. Marco's GPS is where, like, mile 23, so we're guessing because it did stop for a while, it was about mile 26, something like that. It's real warm. It's got to be close to above freezing if, it's, if, if it isn't. It's probably close to 40 now. Come to the rock shelters, and of course they are completely covered with big old monster icicles. We're gonna go right up in there. You get to go with it. Yay, lucky you, huh? All the fun and none of the work. Uh, as far as I know, I'm sure there's other rock shelters in Indiana. These are the only ones I know. Wow. Oh, wow. Check that out. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Some people for now and then think it's a good idea to camp up in here. It is not. Pretty tricky. There we go. Broken them off. Quick view here of the rock shelter and all of the bicycles. Come around this way. I'm gonna come up there. Rob Marco says there's something really cool, so let's go see. If we can get through here without busting ourselves. I'm staying on the dirt. Stay off the little slippy stuff. Oh my god. I don't know if I can even get there without. Yeah, you gotta come over on this side. We're dry. Well, we've come out of uh, the last big climb that we had. Now we're like heading for the Morgan Monroe property office, which I believe is like four miles. <laughs> it's pretty boring four miles. There's not a lot going on. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's well maintained. It's pretty much what it looks like. It is really warmed up. It's, gosh, I'm sure it's above 40 something now. Yeah. I don't even feel like I need this hat anymore, so maybe I'll take it off. Uh, Marco's up the front. There he is. And, you know, I'll kind of show you if there's anything else interesting coming up. <laughs> Still walking through the pines. Yay, through the pines. Uh, it is 12.32. Uh, probably mile, close to mile 30. I'm pretty sure it's 32 miles total is what we did, or what we're going to do. But anyway, here's Marco. No, it's not. It's not, Marco. It actually feels like it might rain. And it's like I said, it's warmed up a lot. Well, here we are. We're at the end of it. 32 some odd miles, Yellowwood Lake, to Morgan Monroe Property Office, Tecumseh Trail. Uh, about 114. 
think we went about, I don't know, seven miles today. We're done. Here's the end of it. Yep. And signs are out right over here, which is always what makes it official.